Pastor Mark Mata with us. God bless you, church. Amen. Thank you, precious people. You may be seated. Amen. How's everybody doing tonight? Amen. Praise God. I trust and pray that everybody's doing fine and great in the house of the Lord. Uh, I feel a little warm. I don't know if maybe they can adjust it a little bit uh, because uh, it's going to get hot. Amen. It's going to get hot. It's going to get hotter than it is right now. Praise God. Well, what a wonderful time being in the presence of the Lord, worshiping God, and uh, just enjoying worshiping God. You know, that's, that's what it's all about. Amen. That's how we get refreshed. That's how we get uh, yeah. encouraged and, and refueled in the spirit is when we just begin to let go and let God yeah. and we just worship him for who he is yeah. and uh, so praise the Lord for that wonderful atmosphere amen and I think we're ready to hear the word amen yeah. hallelujah we're ready to hear the word today so let's go before the Lord in prayer tonight and then we're gonna uh, just see what the Lord wants us to hear tonight father we love you so much and God we just humble ourselves in your sight we thank you, Lord, that you are helping us to grow more and more like Jesus. Lord, that is our desire. That is our aim. We've been singing about it all night that we want to grow, God. We want that fire to be a set aflame in our heart, God. We want to, Father, we want to flow with your spirit. We want those rivers of living water to begin to just flow and bubble out of our innermost being, God. I pray tonight, Lord, that uh, you would do what only you can do by your Holy Spirit, Lord. By the Lord, we know that we are frail, that we are empty, that we are impotent without you, Lord God. But we trust in you tonight, God, that you will, uh, Lord, just bless your people and give us ears to hear tonight the voice of the Holy Spirit. That something we say tonight would just revolutionize our lives for eternity. And we will be careful tonight, Lord, to give you all the praise and all the honor and all the glory. It is in Jesus' name we pray. And everyone said amen. Amen. And amen. All right. Well, if you have your Bibles tonight, I want you to go with me, please, to Proverbs 14. The book of Proverbs. I remember one time in, uh, in my walk with God, I was already in the ministry. And I was serving my pastor and, and uh, just uh, had wonderful opportunities to be there and, and do ministry with uh, my pastor. And I remember uh, the Lord took me on a journey through the book of Proverbs. I began to just have a desire in my heart to read. I think it was like every day I was taking one chapter from the book of Proverbs. I believe it has 31 different chapters. And each chapter was just so rich. I mean, each word, each verse was so rich in truth and volume and wisdom and understanding. It's called the book of wisdom, the book of knowledge, because it was written by uh, Solomon, who you remember Solomon, he prayed to the Lord one day. He said, God, I don't want riches. I don't want money. I don't want a new car. I don't want a new house. I don't want a family. I don't want a wife. I, I don't want anything uh, materialistic uh, in the flesh. He said, God, I need your wisdom. Amen. I want your wisdom. Yes. And God said, because you asked for wisdom to guide my people as a king, I'm going to give you everything else. And so I've learned in life that when we get God's wisdom, when we get God's knowledge, it is really more valuable than anything in the world. Amen. It's more valuable than, than silver or gold and materialistic things. Amen. When you got wisdom, you got everything. Amen. 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 So this scripture here in Proverbs 14, verse 4. Proverbs 14, verse 4 is one of these uh, wisdom keys, these wisdom uh, nuggets, these uh, revelation from God's word, all right? So let's look at it together. And I'm just going to read this one verse scripture. This is going to be our our foundation on tonight. I don't know if tonight's going to be a series or, uh, or just a word that the Lord put in my heart, but I do believe God wants, to, want, wants us to hear this tonight. Proverbs 14, verse 4. Now, can you please, if you can, put it in the original King James Version? I think that's the new King James Version. My Bible also is the new King James Version. By the way, that's one of my favorite versions of the Bible. I don't know what version you have on your, in your Bible or on your phone, or you have a Bible app like mine, and you have different, a variety of different versions. So this is the original King James Version. I love the wording of this scripture, all right? And this is what it says. Where no oxen are, the crib is clean. Let's look at that again. Where no oxen are present, the crib or the, or the feeding trough is clean, but much increase is by the strength 
of the ox. Mm -hmm. Much strength, the Bible says, comes by the power of an ox. Right. And so I want to just encourage you tonight. I just want to lift your spirit man up tonight and let you know that God's will for us as people of God is to be as strong as an ox. Mm -hmm. God wants us, metamorphically speaking tonight, God wants us to be like an ox, to be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Amen. So God doesn't want us to be weak. God doesn't want us to be anemic. God doesn't want us to be, you know, just barely holding on in this world. Mm -hmm. When we go through trials or we go through tribulation. I like what James says. James says, count it all joy when you fall into different kinds of trials and tribulations. Count it all joy. Amen. See, when you add up things in your life, at first, and some of those things don't look positive. Some of those things don't look very bright. But when you add them up on that spiritual calendar ca calculator in your life, mm. you know what happens? You put that total sum, and the Bible says it'll be joy. Right. It'll be joy unspeakable and full of glory. Yes. I, I want to talk today about, our theme is going to be, we can put it on the screen now, strong as an ox. God wants his believers to be strong. The scripture says that, where there are no ox, yeah, there'll, there'll be no problems. The crib will be clean. There'll be no challenges. There'll, there'll be no manure. There'll be no dirt. There'll, there'll be no difficulties. He said, but when you get the ox, there might be days when uh, you think, man, I don't, wanna, I don't want that ox here, you know, because it's causing me so many problems. But the Bible says we welcome the oxen. We welcome the ox because... It brings great strength in our lives. Right. It increases strength in our lives. So when God wants to increase your life, when God wants to increase the anointing in your life, you know what he does? He sends an ox your way. Mm -hmm. He sends a challenge your way. Mm -hmm. He sends a tribulation your way. That's how God grows us. That's how God grooms us. He, he grooms us through trials and tribulation. I look back at my life and, and, I, and I, some of the things, I still don't know some of the the reasons why I went through things, but some of the things I looked at, I said, well, that's why. That's why, God, I had to go through that. Amen. That's why I went through that loss. That's why I went through that purging. That's why I went through that breakup of that relationship. That's why I went through all of that, because yes. it was making me strong as an ox. Amen. It was making me stronger in the Lord yes. and the power of His might. Yes. So, um, let me just give you some thoughts a little bit about being strong. See, the strong, and that's who you and I are, can do what the weak cannot do. Right, right. The strong can do what the weak can do. The strong successfully resist. Resist what the weak don't want to resist. Amen. See, there's some people who are always led by their emotions, yeah. always led by their feelings, always led by just how their mood is that day. Mm. And that's being weak. Yes. That's being frail. A strong man, a strong woman of God learns how to govern their feelings. Yes. Take control of their mood swings. Yes. Amen. Understand that, that life has, has ups and downs. Yes. Yes. And that we don't make permanent decisions right. based upon temporary feelings. Yes. Amen. Oh, that's good right yes. there. Right. We don't make permanent decisions mm -hmm. based upon a temporary emotional right. feeling because we're stronger than that. Yes, yes. We're stronger than that. Amen. We got God's DNA yes. living on the inside of us. Right. Right. Yes. See, the weak crumble when they're under pressure. Mm. The weak don't know how to handle pressure. Mm. The weak don't know how to handle a divorce. Mm. The weak don't know how to handle an illness, a doctor's report that doesn't sound good. Yeah. The weak just listens to what everything the world system says. But how many know that the Bible says that we are in the world, but we're not of the world? Right, right. yes, right. yes. We don't operate and function by the system of this world. Mm -hmm. We get our source of strength from the Word of God. Amen. Mm -hmm. From the spiritual ox that lives on the inside of us. Mm -hmm. See, the weak, they crumble under the pressure. They drop the ball. Mm -hmm. That's right. The weak, they drop the ball when it gets when life gets too heavy. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't want this anymore. 
because this is too hard. I don't want to serve God anymore because there's too many problems. Mm. Well, how many know that sometimes you have to stand by yourself before others will follow you? Yeah. Right. Sometimes you got to stand alone in your faith in God. Mm. Right. Hallelujah. Yes. Before others will see the light in you. That's right, yes. Before others are changed by your life. Mm. So sometimes you got to stay strong and not crumble under pressure. Amen. Don't crumble and don't drop the ball. Amen. Amen. When the ball has been given to you, when the baton of heaven has been given to you and I, then we must do everything in our power. Amen. To be responsible believers in the Lord. Yes. Weak people, they they uh, they bow to to the opposing forces of this world. They bow down to what the world says. If the world says it, they don't even question it. We'll do it. Yeah. Yeah. That's a weak person. But a strong person always evaluates their decisions based yes. upon the word of God. Yes. yes. A strong man or woman of God just doesn't go by what the crowd says. Right. Just doesn't go by what this culture says. Mm. But a strong man or woman of God, they understand that I got to live my life based upon the say of the Lord. Yes. Yes. The strong move forward. That's right. They move yes. forward to a course without deviating under pressure, irrespective of the criticism or the opposition. Mm -hmm. A strong person says, you know what? You may not agree with me right now. You may not understand why I'm going to church. You may not understand why I'm reading my Bible. You may not understand why I, I, I just don't feel the peace about that. But let me tell you something. We still go forward. We still move with the cloud of God's glory. It reminds me of the, of the, of the man of God, uh, Nehemiah. Nehemiah 4. Can we read that for just a moment? Nehemiah 4 and verse 7. Nehemiah was a man that felt compelled by the Spirit of God to rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. And he went through criticism. The Bible tells us that there were some people that didn't like him rebuilding the walls. They were mockers. At first they were mocking him. They were saying that just a little fox goes through your, goes through your uh, wood, and goes through your building process, then everything's going to crumble, they said. They were mocking the people of God. You ever been mocked? Yeah. People just laugh at you. They yeah. think, yeah, right. See, let, let's see if that's really going to happen. Yes, yes. But see, they don't know what God has birthed in your spirit. Right, right. They don't know what God spoke to you in your secret place. Yeah. Hallelujah. Because in the secret place, God spoke to Nehemiah, and I want you to rebuild. <laughs> The walls of Jerusalem that have been laid dormant and waste for years. Amen. And but look what happens. It says, and then it came to pass that when Sanballat and Tobiah and the Arabians and the Ammonites and the Ashdodites heard that the walls of Jerusalem were made up and that the breaches began to be stopped, then they were angry or they were wroth. Look at the next verse. They, they were so angry because they were rebuilding the wall. Look at what they did. They conspired, all of them, together to come and to fight against Jerusalem and to hinder. Wow. They wanted to hinder the work of God. There's people that will try to hinder what God's trying to do in your life. Yeah. The enemy will come to try to hinder you. He wants you to be weak. He wants you to, he wants you to crumble under pressure. He, he wants the things in life that you're dealing with to be so uh, affecting your mind and the way you live that you never come back to church, mm. that you never read your Bible again, right, that yeah. you never pray again, that, that you never uh, want more of God in your very life. Mm -hmm. See, that's the trick and the trap right. of the enemy yes, yes. is to hinder you amen. and to stop you from rebuilding the walls amen. in your life. Amen, amen. amen. Now, I want to read a little bit more. Uh, jump around, listen to the next verse. And I'm going to just kind of go with, go with uh, what you got on the screen there. It says, nevertheless, they, we made, it says, a prayer to our God and set a watch against them day and night because of them. In other words, Nehemiah said, we're not going to bow down. We're not going to become weak. We're not going to let their plots, their schemes destroy us. He said, we're going to pray to God. We're going to seek the Lord Jesus Christ. And we're going to watch out for them. Because the Bible says to watch and pray. Yes. We got to watch and pray. Yes. We got to pray. Maybe that's why God gave us two eyes. We got to close one eye and keep the other one open. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We got to keep one closed so we can be in tune with heaven. But we got to keep one eye open so we can see what's happening on earth. So we can see the enemies that try to come against us. Amen. Amen. 
Let's read on a little bit more. It says, oh, here it is. Thank you. This is the one I wanted to dwell on. And Judah said, the strength of the bearers of the burdens the build, that are building the wall, it's, it's failing. It's decaying. And there is much rubbish that we are not able to build the wall. That's where many people are right now. Yes. That they're stuck in a rut. Mm. That they're not rebuilding the walls in their life. That they're letting the enemy do whatever they want to do in their life. That's right. But God's called us to be strong like ox. Yes. God's called us to be strong in the power of his might. And yes. so we read again, verse the, the next verse, please, verse 11. It says, and our adversary said, they shall not know, neither shall now they, now they won't see till we come in in the midst among them and we kill them and we cause the work to cease. Next verse, please. And it came to pass that when the Jews which dwell by them came, that they said unto them ten times from all places, when you shall return unto us, they will be appointed. They started putting fear in, and, and they started hearing that voice of fear. Therefore, he said, Nehemiah, I am in the lower places I will set behind the wall. And on the higher places I will even set the people after their families and their swords and their spears and their bows. Mm. Mm -hmm. He's not backing down. That's right. He looked and he rose up and he said, and he told the nobles and all the rulers and all the rest of the people, be not afraid of them. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Be not afraid of them. Yeah. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible and fight Amen. for your brethren. And fight for your sons. And fight for your daughters. And fight for your wives. And fight for your houses. Come on, somebody. Yeah. We got to fight the good fight of yeah. faith. Yeah. We can't just let the devil do whatever he wants to do. Right. We got to fight for our children. We got to fight for our grandchildren. Yeah. We got to yeah. fight for our sons and our daughters. We got to fight for our ministry, for our calling. Right. We got to fight even though the anointing was on Nehemiah. And even though the calling was on him, I think, I mean, I'm not going to with just that next verse, verse 15. Even though the anointing was on him, God, it said that it came to pass that when our enemies heard that it was known unto us and that God had brought their counsel to nothing. Mm -hmm. Hallelujah. Mm -hmm. Then we returned all of us to the wall, everyone to his work. And they eventually, in 52 days, yeah. rebuild the walls of Jerusalem. Yeah. The enemy's plan came to nothing. Amen. 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 But the way, the reason why the enemy's plans came to nothing, church, is because, is because they fought. Right. They stood up and they said, devil, you're not taking this vision. Amen. You're not stopping this dream from coming right. to pass. Amen. Whatever dream, whatever vision God has birthed in your spirit, don't let fear bring down those walls. Mm -hmm. Don't let Whatever intimidation by people stop you, the mockery, the murmurs, the, the backbiters, the gossipers, the haters. Don't let the people stop the vision right. that God has birthed right. in your heart. Yes. Be strong as an ox. Amen. Hallelujah. So we go back to our text, Proverbs 14. And as I was studying this, of course, I read different translations, different versions of this verse. And um, but back with the King James Version, you can put it up again. Proverbs 14, 4, it says that where there are no oxen, where there's no oxen present, well, the crib, the crib is empty. The, the, there, there's no, uh, you know, presence of, of any animal. You don't smell anything. You don't, you don't see any bad things. He said, but much increase, it comes by the strength of an ox. Now, this is what I learned about an ox. Have you ever heard Someone once say, that person is as strong as an ox. You ever heard that yeah. saying? Yeah. Well, what that saying means, it, it refers to the strength of an ox. It refers to the powerful strength of an ox or a bull that is typically uh, domesticated to do farm work. The Hebrew word for the word uh, ox is the word shore. S-H-O-R, which means red bull. No, I'm just kidding. It just means bull. <laughs> I don't want to see you all the way. Red bull. No, it just means bull. And uh, or an ox. See, the farmers during the day of Solomon, they, uh, they relied heavily on oxen for their productivity and agriculture. 
It was very essential to have oxen back then, like it is today, in many places today, in many farmlands, is, is that it was at that time, and still is in most cases, the most profitable farm animal of that day. It was more profitable than even a horse. Oxen were, were large, strong-looking animals. Well, they, you saw an ox and you saw strength. As I said, stronger than, than even horses. They were, um, they have, of course, you know, you've seen them, two horns, four legs. And, uh, and they're considered, as I studied this, oxen are considered adults when they're four years of age. Wow. When they're very young, very still young, four years of age, they're considered adults. That's how strong they are at that age. And they can live up to 15 years. They're very strong. And as I was meditating on this and studying in my own devotional time, and I'm reading a chapter called The Strength of an Ox, and it's just so powerful. I saw in my spirit, I saw as I was studying this, I saw three strengths. I'm calling these the three strengths of an ox that I believe are applicable to a child of God. I believe that they apply to a Christian to a believer that wants to be strong in the Lord. Church, if we're going to be strong in the Lord, we're going to have to be like ox. Mm -hmm. right. And so three things I learned about an ox as I was doing my little research. I discovered, number one, that an ox has pacing strength. That's good. That's good. Pacing strength. That's good. What yeah. do I mean? Oxen can pull heavy amounts of weight at a steady pace. Mm -hmm. They don't just stop and then go. They, 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 they're carrying that weight, whatever's on them, at a steady momentum, a steady pace. They are able, in other words, to perform, an ox is able to perform their duties at a successful rate of movement. I mean, they got a flow going. They got a, 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 a divine tempo going on. <laughs> See, they have developed that tempo of progression. Mm -hmm. Now, what does that have to do with us as believers? We need to get in the rhythm and the pace of God. Right. If we're going to be strong in the Lord, we can't be up one moment and then don't want to go to church right. next week. That's right. Oh, yes. We got to have a consistent walk yes. with God. Yes. We got to have a pace. And I believe he's going to be one of the witnesses that come that is talked about in the book of Revelation. Now, look at this scripture. Oh, hallelujah. We got any oxen this, this evening. We got any oxen in the spirit. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Second Chronicles, not Corinthians. I know sometimes that confuses you on the back. But Second Chronicles, that's the Old Testament. Chapter 15, verse 7. Now, I've read this scripture before. But when I read it this time, something just leaped out of my spirit. And I'll tell you what it is. It says to be strong, therefore. Be strong, therefore. And let not your hands be weak. For your work will be rewarded. What a wonderful promise. That if we straight, stay strong in the pace of God. That's what it means. If we stay strong and never let our hands become weak. And we just keep plowing. Praise God. You got to keep plowing when you don't see your harvest yet. You got to keep plowing when nobody likes you. Yes, you got to keep yes, plowing when the amen. doctor's report is not all that good. Yes. You got to keep plowing, amen, when, amen, when you haven't seen your financial breakthrough, yes. but you've been tithing, yes. but you've been giving, yes. you've been sowing, yes. you've been doing this, you've been doing all the right things amen. Yes, amen. to create your harvest. Amen. You got to just keep strong, keep, like that oxen, just keep pulling that, that weight. Just keep pulling whatever you got. Mm. Keep pulling those that wood, keep pulling that log, and keep pulling those those uh, materials and just keep pulling whatever equipment you've got. You just got to keep pulling it. Mm. See, you got to stay in that rhythm. Don't let your hands get weak. Mm. Right. Just stay in that momentum. Yes. Keep the momentum of God flowing. Amen. 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 When, when, when God's doing, when God, when God did it, has ever done an incredible thing in your life, my Lord, keep that momentum flowing. Amen. Amen. How do you keep that momentum flowing when God, when God does something in your life? Well, you just always remember to be thankful. You always remember to be grateful. 
Always remember the blessings of God. That's what the Bible says. Don't forget his benefits. Amen. Don't forget the daily blessings that God gave. I mean, if anything, you ought to thank God. He woke you up this morning. Yeah. Yeah. He woke you up this morning. Yeah. Yeah. The Bible says he daily loads me with benefits. Yes. So like that ox, we got to have a pacing strength. Mm -hmm. The pacing strength. We just keep walking with God. Right. Just keep loving God. Mm -hmm. Just keep doing the right things. Amen. We, we don't walk by our feelings all the time. We, we just stay at pace. We stay focused on what God's called us to do. Look at this scripture. Oh, this is powerful. Joshua 1, 7. The book of Joshua, chapter 1 and verse 7. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Only, it says, be strong. Only what? Be strong and very courageous that you may observe to do. According to all the law which Moses, your servant, has commanded, don't turn to the right, don't turn to the left, mm -hmm. that you may prosper wherever you go. Amen. 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 Now, here's what I want you to see in that verse, is that obedience keeps you at pace with God. Amen. You want to be at pace with God? Thank you. You want to be connected with God? Stay obedient. Mm -hmm. Yes. What God's told you to do. And you know God's told you to do something. God is not going to give you no new instructions mm -hmm. until you obey the last instruction. Amen. 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 So maybe there's somebody here tonight. God's already been speaking to you. God's already shown you something to do. And you haven't done it. Listen, remember, delayed obedience can turn into disobedience. Mm -hmm. right. Right. So don't put it off too long. Don't put it off. Mm -hmm. keep, keep obeying God. Stay obedient to God. That's how we stay at pace with God. Mm -hmm. Is we stay obedient to the Lord. Yes. And, and we keep on doing God's will. And we keep on doing what's right. We don't turn to the right. We don't turn to the left. And we keep our focus on God. We obey his word. We, we, we eat his word. We, we, we keep his word in our heart. We chew it. We digest it. We speak it. And we wake up in the morning. We don't speak what the world says. We don't speak what the news says. We don't speak what our friends say. We speak what the say the Lord yes, says. Yes, yes, yes. And we stay at pace with God. Mm. All right? So that's the first key, the first um, strength that I saw of an ox, is they have pacing strength, mm -hmm. all right? Number two, I believe this is also very important, what I learned about an ox is that they have perpetual strength. Mm -hmm. They not only have, amen, that pacing, walking with God, consistent strength, mm -hmm. but they have also perpetual strength. In other words, they can use their strengths for a long period of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. They have tremendous yeah. skill of longevity. Mm -hmm. yeah. They know how to continue on and on and on. They're perpetual. Oxen, I'm told, is what I read, are also very cooperative. We talked about obedience. <laughs> Do you know that, that oxen are very similar. You might not have thought about this. I didn't, I didn't think about it when I read it. And uh, that oxen can, they're, they're very cooperative when you give them commands, like your pets. Mm -hmm. Just like you can teach your dog mm -hmm. and your cat to do certain tricks mm -hmm. and certain things that you tell them to do. You know, go over there. No, 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 don't do that. Don't do that. Mm -hmm. You can do the same thing to oxen. Yeah. Oxen are very submissive to their masters. Mm -hmm. Oxen are very cooperative. Yep. And listen to this. Oxen are dependable animals. They're not going to, they're not church hoppers. <laughs> they don't come to a church and say, Pastor, I'm going to be there this Sunday. And then they come for a week or two and then you don't see them for another two years. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're not, ah, come on, that's a weak Christian. Yes, that's yes. a weak believer if they even are a believer. Right, right. I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. Mm. They might be a believer, but they're weak. Yep. A strong believer has a persistent attitude. Yes. Has a spirit of, I'm going to be there through the thick and through the thin. Yes. Hallelujah. Amen. They have perpetual strength. And they're loyal. Isn't that amazing? Oxen are loyal. Mm. They're committed. They stay around. Even when the workload, I read this in the encyclopedia, even they stick around in their specific farm, wherever they're at, with their farmer or their master, they stay there in their territory even when the load gets heavy. Mm. 
Even when the master says it's going to hurt you a little bit, but I got to put some extra weight on you today because we got to go do something. We got, we got, we got to go to the other side of the field or whatever. Mm. Amen. I know some pe people in the church, as soon as things get a little hard, they're out. Yeah. Yeah. As soon as things get a little bit tough, they're out. Mm. As soon as, you know, they're going through a problem, they're out. Yeah. No, but not oxen. Oxen have perpetual strength. Yes. Amen. Praise God. Yes. They stick around when other people leave. Yes. There's some animals, I'm told, there's some animals that when you put more tasks on them, more work, they're going to find a new, a new owner. <laughs> <laughs> they're going to find a new man. They say, I'll see you later. I, I don't deserve this. <laughs> oh, they'll sneak out that backyard. You wonder why there's so many street dogs. <laughs> they're like, no, I ain't doing this no more. I'm going to go away and go give me some hot pole. I'm going to go away and go give me some snacks. Hey, man, I'm going to go away and keep me. I want to be an inside dog. Hey, man. And that's true. There's certain animals that will bail out when things get rough, but not an ox. An ox will not bail out when they put more load on their back, when they have to drive a little bit stronger or harder. Mm. Amen. Look at Isaiah, uh, I think it's 40, chapter 40. Isaiah, and you can go back now, you can go back to the new King James if you don't mind. Uh, I don't think I'll go back to the regular King James again. So Isaiah 40, 29. I think that's where I want to go. Isaiah 40, 29. All right. Yeah, that's where I want to go. Thank you. Oh, that, my brother was sharing this scripture with me the other day in prayer. This is so powerful. It says, God gives power to the weak. All right, let's just say for a moment, you, you feel weak. All right, you're having a bad weekend, having a bad day. You know, you feel like calling in. You don't feel like going to church. You, 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 don't, you, don't, you want nobody to mess with you. You just want to stay in your cocoon. You just want to be quarantined, spiritually speaking. You don't want no one to mess with you. Anybody ever felt like being quarantined? Man, I, sometimes I just feel like, man, just, just faking it. Just saying I got COVID. <laughs> so I can just get isolated sometimes. Amen. But I know I can't lie. I got to stay healed in Jesus' name. But anyway, if you ever feel weak, God's promise to you and I is he gives power to the weak. Look at that. He gives power to the weak. Can we say that together in the count of three? Let's read together. One, two, three. He gives power to the weak. Just right there. Say it again. One, two, three. He gives power to the weak. One more time. Turn it off. Sound good. He gives power to the weak. See, so you got to speak to yourself. I am a powerful man of God. I am a child of God. Yes. And to those that have no might, he what? He increases like an ox. He increases your strength. Now look at this. Mm, it, gets, it gets good. Even the young people shall faint and be weary. All right, all you young people that think you're strong and, you know, I'll never be on a, never need a walker and never need a wheelchair and <laughs> never need nobody to, you know, carpool me. The devil is alive. <laughs> Amen. Because I see even young people, yes. even young people <laughs> yeah. get tired. They don't want to wake up and go to church on Sunday. Amen. Young people. Ah, yeah. Lord, you would think they have all the energy in the world. I know young people don't even work. Can't even get up in the morning on Sunday. I'm like, what you tired from, brother? What you tired from? I work eight hours a day, practically every day, five days a week. And I wake up in the morning early and I pray on Saturday and I'm in the trenches all day. And I'm up early on Sunday. And I know some people that can't even come to church and wake themselves up to be at 10 o'clock. And they ain't doing nothing at home. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Okay, I'm talking to the wrong church. <laughs> I'm talking to the wrong church. Amen. But there's some people, man, I tell you what, even the young people, I see them fall. That's what it says. Young people will faint and be weary. And the young men will utterly fall. Oh, but look at verse 31. But those that wait on the Lord. Yes. Those that wait on the Lord. Amen. You got to wait on the Lord. What will happen when you wait on the Lord? Yes. A second adrenaline will kick in. Yes. A second wave of the Holy Ghost will kick in. And you will renew your strength. Glory yeah. to God. Yeah. It's not that you need to get that. You already are strong. Yeah. But God wants to renew your strength right. when you wait upon Him. Yeah. And you keep doing it. They shall mount up with wings like eagles. Mm. They will run and not be weary. And they will walk and not faint. Amen. 
Thank you, Lord. What a wonderful, yes. wonderful promise yes. of the Lord. Thank you, yes. Jesus. See, many people can start fast. It's not how, it's not how fast you start. Mm -hmm. But only a few will finish strong. Mm -hmm. God wants this church to finish strong. Right. God, I believe this year, these now we're ready almost a month and a half where we're going to enter a new year, God willing. Mm -hmm. Let me tell you something. God wants us to finish strong 2020. I know it has been one of the most challenging years that most of us have ever been through. Yes. We've seen challenges in our schools and our workplaces. We we have a, a, the, 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 the president still kind of up in the air. Things are just, it's been yeah. crazy. It's been crazy for businesses. It's been crazy for churches. It's been crazy for a lot of people. Yeah. But let me tell you something. We can finish strong in the name Amen. of Jesus. Yes. We can finish strong. Amen. Second Timothy. And then I'm going to move on to my last point. Second Timothy. Everybody doing okay? Amen. All right, just a little word, a little prayer in my heart tonight. Second Timothy 4, 7. Second Timothy 4, 7. Can you in the back, brother, give me a water bottle? I forgot to get my water bottle. Praise God. Amen. I, I was drinking my Starbucks coffee so good. I forgot my water. <laughs> 2 Timothy 4, 7. I love what Paul said. He said, I fought the good fight. And I have what? Finished the race like an oxen. I finished. And I have kept the faith. Yes. Thank you. I've kept the faith. Isn't that amazing? Now, I want y'all on the count of three to read that verse again so I can take a water break, all right? <laughs> so on the count of three, I want y'all to just say it real loud. I want the sopranos and the altos and the baritones. I want, I want you all to come out and say it. Amen. On the count of three, one, two, three, read. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. One more time. I have fought the good fight. I have See, that's what an ox does. Yes. They finish. Mm. They don't bail out on their on their on their rancher, on their farmer, on their master. Yeah. Right. They don't bail out when things get heavy. Mm. Amen. Amen. They hang in there mm. because they love their master. Mm. Right. They love their farmer. Yes. And they're strong. See? That's why in Proverbs we read that strength comes and it increases through the strength of that ox. Yes. Because that ox, they don't give up. They're perpetual. Mm -hmm. They keep coming back. Let me tell you something. The devil doesn't know what to do when you keep coming back to church. Mm -hmm. When you keep coming back to your prayer closet. Yes. When you keep coming back to the word of God. The yes. devil doesn't know what to do. That's right. right. Amen. Amen. So the third point. I call these the three strengths. The three strengths of an ox is they have punctual strength. Mm -hmm. Punctual strength. You know what I learned about an ox? Is that they only need four hours of sleep wow. per day. Wow. <laughs> I'm talking to all the sleepy heads tonight. <laughs> I'm talking to the to the sleep ones here tonight. An ox just needs four hours. Mm. Just four hours a day. You know what that means? <coughs> How many hours are there in a day? Do y'all know how many hours are in a day? 24. 24 hours, that's right. You know what that means? An ox is agile and awake and alert 20 hours a day. 20 hours a day. They are agile, they are awake, and they are alert. But what does that tell us? That means that you and I, if we got to get that spirit of an ox, we need to be alert. We need to be active. Yes. We need to be attentive in the kingdom of God. We need to have our eyes open. We need to know what the devil's trying to do in our lives and not be ignorant of his devices. Yes. And we need to know the will of God and operate in that plan and the purpose that God has for our very life. Amen. See, we got to be punctual. we got to be alert. we got to be prompt. The definition of punctual means to be prompt. Means to be on time. Means to be early if necessary. If we got to be early and we got to do something a little bit extra, then we make that effort. Yes. Because we know, you know, part of being punctual, it really has nothing to do with your watch. Mm. It really has nothing to do with that clock. Mm. 
Being punctual, you know what it means? It means you value and you respect your commitments. Amen. Now, I used to think when I was preaching good, people were shouting and throwing, you know, that when I don't hear the pin drop, I know I'm preaching real good. When you can't buy it, amen, I know this is good. Yes. Maybe this will help some of you that are always late to whatever. You're late to work. You're late to your doctor's appointment. You're late to church. You're late to whatever. If you have that habit, ask yourself. Look at yourself in the mirror. Don't look at me. Please don't look at me because I see faces looking at me. Don't look at me. You're looking at the wrong person. Get out of the mirror and look at yourself. And look at yourself. And say, do I value my commitments? Mm. When you set up a meeting with somebody and you, and you say, okay, I need to talk to you. Okay, cool. Let's have breakfast. I'll see you at Denny's at 9. And you show up at 9.30, you just disrespected that person. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I know things happen. Mm -hmm. Things happen. You get run out of gas and, you know, whatever, you know, so situations, things can happen. But I'm talking about when you notice a pattern of being tardy, yeah. a pattern of being late. Yes. It's because you don't value your commitments. Right. Mm, I think I'm going to have to. <laughs> Uh, just wave at y'all before we go tonight. <laughs> All right. I want to talk to some of y'all, but I guess I can't talk to y'all now. <laughs> Do you value your commitments? Do you value your job? You're there on time. You value your church? You're there on time. Amen. Right. You value what the people have given to you to serve you? If you don't, you just come whenever. Do you value when your pastor is in the trenches on Saturday? Mm. And he's praying and asking God to give him a word to touch the people. So that lives can be changed. Do you value that? I know things come up. We got to work or schedules happen. I'm not talking about that. Please, nobody misunderstand what I'm saying. Right. But you know in your own heart. Mm -hmm. I know in my own heart. Yes. If I value my commitments. It's really an issue of commitment. Yes. It's not an issue of time. It's not an issue of my watch. It's not an issue of a clock. Amen. Two scriptures and I'll be done. Psalm 63. Man, y'all were liking me earlier, right? Oh, man. <laughs> Psalm 63, verse 1. <laughs> David had the spirit of an ox in him. The psalmist. Because look what he said. Oh God, you are my God. Early I will seek you. You remember what I taught you here. Remember this. We don't do hard things first. We don't do easy things first. We don't do what we want to do first. We don't do fun things first. We do first things first. Yeah. We seek God. Yes. Early I will seek you. God has to be your priority. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh longs for you in a dry and in a thirsty land where there is no water. Verse 2, he said, For I have looked for you in the sanctuary to see your power and to see your glory. What happens when we become alert and we seek the Lord first and we have an early spirit inside of us? Whatever early, I'm not talking about it could be five for some of us. It could be four. It could be seven. It could be eight. Well, I'm not talking about it. That's between you and God. But whatever that early time is with God, you spend it before the Lord. And guess what's going to happen? Strength and power is going to rise inside yes. you. Yes. You'll have a better day when you seek God first. Amen. Let me try that again. You'll have a better day yes. when you seek God first. Amen. If you put God first on your calendar for the day, things fall into place. That's what David said. I get the power of God, he said. I get God's strength. I get the mind of God. I get the heart of God. I get his glory, his anointing. Mm. When I seek him early. Right. Being punctual, again, as I said, it's not about time. It's about your respect for your commitments. Mm -hmm. Now, look at this. One last scripture, and then, and then we'll pray. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. 1 Corinthians 16, 13. I really do appreciate it. Let's give a little hand of praise for the meeting back there again, man. They're doing always a great job. They're always doing a great job. We appreciate their effort for the Lord. Yes, yes. First Corinthians 16, 13. Watch. In other words, be alert. Be punctual. Watch. Stand fast in the faith. Be brave. And like an ox, be strong. But it starts with, look at that first word. Watch. We got to be alert. We got to be active. We got to be paying attention what's going on because that's one of the strengths of an ox. Right. All right. So as I conclude, 
Just a little review. Like the ox, we need to operate and function with pacing strength. Keep that pace with God. Oh, hallelujah. Keep your Wednesday night an itinerary in your walk with God. Amen, yes. Keep your Sunday morning an itinerary in your walk with God. Keep your prayer life consistent. Yes. Amen. Amen. Champions do things consistently. Right. Yes. We do things consistently. Right. Losers do things occasionally. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. We're not occasional Christians. That's right. We're not religious Christians. Amen. We are pacing Bible-believing Christians. Amen. We keep pace with our God. Yes. And then we, we're persistent. We're perpetual. We have perpetual strength. We just keep fighting the good fight of faith. We keep mm -hmm. getting up. You're not a failure if you get knocked down. Right. You're a failure if you stay down. Right? Yes. Right. You're a failure if you don't get back up. Mm. We've all had bad days. Mm. Have you not had a bad day? Maybe just even today and you second guessing your wins tonight. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> I know most of the time when I'm going to work and it's not going to church too. Most of the time when I get up to go to work, I don't feel like going to work. Man, my body's hurting. There's something, at least there's one part of my body that doesn't want to get up. At least one part. And same thing with church. But I, once I put on my clothes, take a shower, brush my teeth, get some Starbucks. I said, no, Lord. Get some Starbucks in your spirit. Man, I'm good. I'm good to go. Alright, so you got to have perpetual strength. And then, don't forget to put God first. Be a punctual believer. Yeah. Be an on-time believer. Mm. You know, I think it was William Shakespeare. William Shakespeare said, better to be three hours too soon <laughs> than one minute too late. <laughs> Come on. Some said, I don't believe that, Pastor. I, I'm, just, I'm just not going to receive that tonight. Everything you said was good, but that, I'm just going to delete that. I'm going to pretend like I didn't hear that, Pastor. Okay. <laughs> I like that. I'd rather be earlier than late. Because I'm not one minute might be costly. Mm. So story was told, I close with this story. The story was told about the great Napoleon. The great Napoleon had one day was riding his horse. And he lost control of his horse. It's what it was told. Witnesses say that Napoleon was struggling to try to keep the balance. He was going to fall off. He was going to trip. And that horse was, for some reason, just, it just went chaotic. And he lost control of riding that horse. And all of a sudden, uh, just a private a soldier, that's all he was, in Napoleon's army, he saw him, that he was struggling with this horse. And that, you know what that private did? He jumped in the pathway of that horse, was able to get on that horse that Napoleon was struggling with, and he was able to control that horse. And that horse calmed down, and Napoleon was saved. And nothing bad happened to him. You know what Napoleon, did? it's on record that he said these words, the great Napoleon. He said, and I quote, thank you, three words. He said, thank you, Captain. <laughs> thank you, Captain. Because in one moment, all it took was one act of strength and courage. Mm -hmm. Of a soldier, just a soldier. Didn't have a high rank, just a private. He took an act of courage like an ox. He had some strength in him and he, he reacted with pacing strength, with perpetual strength, with punctual, alert, on time strength. He reacted. And guess what? Napoleon said, you're no longer a private. He said, thank you, captain. He made him a captain. A general in his army. Because he saw the strength of an ox. He saw the strength and the increase of pacing strength. Of perpetual Persistent strength of a on time punctual strength. He said, This guy doesn't belong as a soldier anymore. This young man is a general. Thank you, Captain. What would happen if we put the great high priest first in our lives? What would happen if we get off of our horse and our comfort zone and we see that there's trouble? in the kingdom. And we get on there and we help and we support 
And we focus on our commander in chief. Yes. And we focus on the kingdom of heaven and the kingdom of God. Amen. Do you know why Napoleon promoted that private that day? Because he cared about him. If we put God first and we go after God first and we use our strength to go, Lord, I know I'm tired today, but I got to get your word in me. God, I know I'm struggling today, but Lord, I'm going to stand yes. in faith. Yes. God wants us to be strong. I pray that tonight something that was said Amen. encouraged you yes. and challenged you to be strong yes. as an ox. Bow your heads and close your eyes with me. Pray so you can make your way to the front. Every head bowed, every eye closed tonight. Lord, I thank you for the people of God that are here tonight. I thank you for strong men and women of God. Thank you for strong young people here in this church. God, we thank you for our youth. We thank you for the men. We thank you for the women. We thank you for this body of believers, those watching by Facebook. We thank you for strong believers in God. But we are not weak, impotent, emaciated, Confused believers. Like Enoch, Lord, we're walking in pace with you. We know your will for our lives, God. We're not a confused people of God. We have the peace of God that surpasses all revelation and understanding. I pray for this blessed congregation here tonight. That you would make us strong like the ox. Lord, that you would make us strong not perfect people, but strong people. Not people that never make mistakes, but strong believers. Not people who miss the mark sometimes, but strong, strong spiritual oxen in this house. I want you to lift your hands to the Lord. Those of you watching us too, virtually, online, on your phone, live stream. I want you to lift up your hand where you're at. And right there before we go home tonight, church, if you want to stand, you can. But if you want to stay seated, that's up to you. I'll just leave that up to you tonight. But I want to pray for you. Would you allow me as your pastor? Would you allow me as your shepherd? We pray for needs this Monday night. Thank you for those of you who wrote down those needs. Rest assured, your church family prayed for those needs. Yeah. You know who I'm talking about, those of you who wrote down those petitions. We came in agreement for your faith. We came in agreement with you. Hallelujah. But you got to be strong. You got to be strong. Because those petitions may not be answered right away. Those needs would, may not be met overnight. We agree, we believe, and we have faith, and we're not, we're not letting go of of linking arms and hands with you in the spirit, but you got to stay strong, church. You got to stay strong. You got to stay strong like Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, even if you get thrown in the fiery furnace. They did not give up on God. They did not bow down either to Nebuchadnezzar's image and idol. So don't you bow down, church. Don't bow down to the spirit of the age. Don't bow down to the spirit of this world. You stay strong in the Lord and in the power of His mind. Father, right now, I pray for every one of my brothers and sisters in Christ. Lift your hands now. Lord, I pray for all of my family members in Christ, my brothers in the Lord, my sisters in the Lord. Oh, you love your church, God. You love your church. And I pray for those watching my live stream as well. That you make us strong believers in the Lord. God, that we would not bow under pressure. That we would not be weak when the storms of life come but Lord that we would be like that ox that we would be punctually strong that we would early seek you God before we do anything tomorrow first let us spend time with you I'm talking to somebody here tonight give the Lord the time first before you do anything else tomorrow maybe it's 5 minutes maybe it's 10 minutes maybe it's 15 minutes you got time, you can maybe do a whole hour, 30 minutes. 
but we can all do something. Give God at least five minutes before you go to work, before you go to school. Young people, give God your first fruits. Give God your first thoughts. Because that's where strength comes. Strength comes when we early seek God. And Lord, I pray for perpetual strength, for consistent strength. Lord God, that we keep on carrying that weight as long as we have to to get to the other side. Lord, and I'm reminded of your word, God, that says you will never allow us to be tempted more than we are able. Church, I want you to know tonight, God's never going to allow you to go through anything that you're not able to be strong enough to handle. You're stronger than you think. I said you're stronger than you think. The greater one lives on the inside of you. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead, the word says, lives in us. Hallelujah. And then I pray finally that you would have that pacing, consistent walk with God. Oh, like Enoch, that you walk with God all the days of your life. In Jesus' name we pray. Just remain with your eyes closed, please. But just, I just ask you about just 60 more seconds because if you're here tonight and you do not know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, you're watching by Facebook and you don't know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, maybe you just haphazardly tuned in. Maybe you're in this church and you've been here, you've been here for a while now, but you've never accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Don't squander this opportunity as we learned Sunday. Don't miss your God-given moment, your God-given opportunities. Because this might be the last day, the last moment, the last hour that you may have to get right with God. So if you're here today, I promise I will not embarrass you. Please understand that. I will not shame you. I will not embarrass you. But if you're in this room tonight or you're watching my Facebook and you would like for me to say a prayer with you to make sure that all your sins are forgiven and that you want to be born again, you want to get saved tonight on this Wednesday night, then I'm going to ask you to raise your hand on the count of three. When I say the number three, just raise that hand and that will let me know that you want me to pray a prayer of salvation and repentance for your soul. One. Are you ready? Every saint of God that's right with God. Just pray right now under your breath. Just pray for anyone tonight that might be in the valley of decision. Watching my Facebook. Oh, that, that's right. Just tell the Lord, touch their hearts. Just tell the Lord, touch their hearts. Let them yield, Lord. Let them yield to the Holy Spirit. Two. God's speaking to someone tonight. Or else I wouldn't even do this. I wasn't even planning to say this. So the, obviously the Lord's speaking to somebody. Now when I say three, if you need prayer tonight to make sure that you're right with God, you've never been a Christian, you want to become a believer tonight, or you have backslid, and you want to come back to your first love, and you want to come back to your love for Jesus. When I say three, raise up that hand. I promise I won't embarrass you. This is between you and God, but I want to pray with you. That God, by His Holy Spirit, would open up your heart. Three, anyone here tonight that needs prayer for salvation? I see a couple of hands. Anybody else? I see that hand. I see that hand. God bless you. That took some courage. That took some courage right there to raise that hand. Come on. That's what it means to be strong. You got to take that stand for Jesus. All right. Anybody else? Anybody else? Want to take a stand for God tonight. Want to be strong as that, as that ox. In Jesus' name. All right, right there where you're at, I just want you to say this simple prayer. That's all you got to do. Just say this prayer. Those of you that raise their hands, all you have to do is believe in your heart, confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus, and you will be saved. You will be saved. So say after me, just say, Lord Jesus, I give you my heart, and I give you my life. Please forgive me of all my sins. Wash me. Wash me. In your, blood. in your blood. I'm so sorry, Lord, I'm so sorry, Lord for, the for the way I've been living. And I give you my heart. And I give you my life. I believe, I 
believe. You died on the cross. You died on the cross for my sins. For my sins. And you rose again. And you rose again to give me victory. To give me victory. So I accept you. So I accept you right now. Right now. As my Lord. As my Lord. And my Savior. And my Savior. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. For coming into my heart tonight. Into my heart tonight. Teach me, Lord. Teach me, Lord. How to walk with you. How to walk with you. All the days of my life. All the days of my life. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Well, come on, somebody. Give God praise and give God glory. Can you give me whatever you want? Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Do what you gotta do. Let's stand to our feet before we go. And let's just lift our hands and thank him for what he's doing tonight. Oh, go ahead. You're the love of my soul.
Jesus' name.